Hello and welcome to Fanatics Fish Storytime. Today we're going to have a fun story called Tumble Bumble. We're going to do a great song that includes ants that are marching. And we're going to have fish facts all about bettas. First up we have story time. So get your popcorn and get ready. Here we go. Hi friends, it's time for another edition of Fanatics Fish Storytime. Today we're going to do another one of my absolute favorite books, and yes you're right, I've got a lot of favorite books. This one is Tumble Bumble by Felicia Bond. Tumble Bumble. A tiny bug went for a walk. He met a cat and stopped to talk. fell in step and strolled a while and bumped into a crocodile. The crocodile grinned wide with glee. Uh-oh. And introduced her friend to me. Oh, look at him there. They all began to dance a jig and bumped into a baby pig. Look at him jigging. They're dancing and jigging. That's what a jig is, it's a dance. Mikey squealed, that was my tail. They apologized to no avail. Nothing they could do could make him feel better about his little tail. So the crocodile sang him a song, and as she sang, they bounced along. That made him feel better. Zigging, zagging down the road, they bumped into a big green toad. There he is, the green toad. They keep bumping into things, don't they? The startled toad then scared a mouse. There he is. Who bumped into a yellow house. Whose house do you think that is? They kissed his head and then rang the bell. When no one came, they said, Oh well. Did they go inside? Okay, inside. Tippy towing on fourteen feet. Beep, 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 beep. They look for something good to eat. Nom 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 nom. Dumble bumble up the stairs. There they go. They open doors and check for bears. I don't see any bears there. In one room, they found a bed. I'm really tired, the crocodile said. She stretched out long beside the bee. The toad hopped in, which made them three. Then came the cat, yawning big. Behind him was the baby pig. The bug came next and lost the mouse. All squashed together in someone's house. And this is where the bug squawk begins. Eight. No nine. Well, there's the bear. No ten new friends. What a surprise. Hooray! How would you like to come home and find ten new friends in your bed? And that's where the Bugs Walk ends in our story time too. But song time's just about to begin. Alrighty guys, it's time for a song. Today we're going to do the Ants Go Marching. If you remember how the words go, you can sing along. You might even find some of your own lyrics along the way. So we'll start at one. The ants go marching one by one. Hooray! Hooray! The 
ants go marching one by one, hooray, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one, the little one stops to suck his thumb. And they all go marching down to the ground, to the out of the rain. Boom, boom, the ants go marching two by two, hooray, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two, hooray, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two, the little one stops to tie his shoe. Yes, tie his shoe, and they all go marching down to the ground. Get out of the rain. Boom, boom. The ants go marching three by three. Hooray. Hurrah. The ants go marching three by three. Hooray. Hurrah. The ants go marching three by three. The little one stops to climb a tree. Climb a tree. And they all go marching down to the ground. Get out of the rain. Boom. Boom. The ants go marching four by four, hooray, hurrah. The ants go marching four by four, hooray, hurrah. The ants go marching four by four, the little one stops to Shut the door. Yes! Shut the door and they all go marching down to the ground. Get out of the rain. Boom, boom. The ants go marching five by five, hooray, hurrah. The ants go marching five by five, hooray, hurrah. The ants go marching five by five, the little one stops to... Mm hmm, what's five? Poke a hive? Take a dive? Poke a hive. Poke a hive? Uh-oh, that could be trouble. No, not that. Take a dive? Be happy he's alive? I can't remember it. Swing aside? Let's go take a dive. How about poke a dive? Poke a hive? Go down the then slide. we run. Oh, we could go down the slide. That's a good idea from Mom. We're going to go down the slide. Down the slide. Okay. The little one stops to go down the slide, and they all okay. go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. We could go on for many, many more numbers. We're gonna call it all for story time and songs today. Was that fun? <laughs> Thanks yeah. for coming, sir. Again! Listen and play, and we all go singing and reading today. Thank you. Thanks for We're everybody singing play. along today. With us. Thanks for everyone for singing along with us today. Stick around for the fish facts, folks. And now it's time for some fish facts, friends. Today we're going to be talking about bettas. First thing to know about bettas is how to say the name. You'll commonly hear them referred to or called a beta. Beta is actually a more better way to say beta. So you can remember it that way. Some people will also call them a Siamese fighting fish. We'll talk more about why that is later. Bettas come in many, many different colors. You'll see white ones and black ones and blue ones and red ones. Sometimes you'll see fish with pink or like this guy who has some orange. Yellow, green, just about any color you can think of, you can find a betta that either is that color or has that color in him. Usually when you think of bettas, you think of a fish with really long fins and in the betta world, the boys have the long fins and the girls typically have quite short fins. Though some bettas, even the boys, don't have particularly long fins. Each different tail shape has a name. You'll see these guys here that are called a crown tail. Crown tail shows all the little streamers, like uh, the points in a crown. There are also a veil tail betta or a half moon betta. Uh, Placat betta, each one of those names talks about a different type of tail shape. 
short, long, fluffy, round. There's a different color and a different shape better for just about any occasion. This little fella here is a half moon. See that he's got the big round tail in the back. And next we're going to have a guy that they call a Dumbo. He's got a half moon tail also. But he's called a Dumbo because he's got the big fins in the front. Like Dumbo the elephant. Whichever fin style or color, all bettas are just an amazing fish and a, an amazing natural history behind them. They've been being kept in captivity for hundreds of years. They're called a Siamese fighting fish because when two bettas see each other, they immediately get all worked up and start thinking about starting a fight. Bettas are known for being so aggressive that you can't possibly keep two together. They'll keep fighting until one of them is no more. Though, even though they're so aggressive with each other, it is actually possible oftentimes to keep a betta in with other types of fish. If he doesn't see them as a threat to his nest, he'll usually leave them alone. Though you can't always count on that. Sometimes the Bettas don't get the memo, and they're aggressive with other fish as well. Also, like with any fish, if it'll fit in his mouth, it'll certainly go there. Actually, it can be a real problem keeping bettas in tanks with other fish because of their long fins. Long fins are like a matador's cape. It gets other fish excited and makes them think that they may be able to catch them and pull those fins and maybe taste them. Also, those big long fins can slow bettas down considerably, so they can have a really hard time getting away from other, faster, more aggressive fish. That's why a lot of times you'll see your bettas kept all by themselves. It's not that they can't go with other fish, but finding the right tank mate for them can be a bit of a challenge. I'm often asked whether or not you can keep boy bettas and girl bettas together, and the answer is Sometimes. Boy bettas are more aggressive than female bettas, and in a small aquarium together, the boy betta will oftentimes bully his girlfriend. Of course, when it's breeding time, they get along just fine. Most betta breeders actually separate them, except for when they're actually breeding. Also, it's often asked whether or not you can keep girl bettas together, and the answer for that is sometimes. Girl bettas are not nearly as aggressive as male bettas, but they will intimidate each other, and sometimes you'll find that the less aggressive females won't fare very well against some of the more aggressive ones in the tank. Another thing I get asked a lot of times is, what should I feed my betta? Bettas are greedy eaters. They'll eat just about anything you offer them. In fact, it's not uncommon for bettas to overeat. So it's important to make sure you only give them the amount they need. If you feed them a little tiny bit about once a day, that usually works very well. If you can imagine, their little eyeballs are about the same size as their little bellies. So I'll give them about an eyeballs full a day and they'll be just fine. Another important aspect to keeping a betta is you gotta change your water. Because we often keep our bettas in small tanks, it's not uncommon for us to end up with water quality problems for our bettas. To make sure that our bettas stay in good shape then, we must change the water frequently, but only a small amount. If you take out about a quarter of the water, or maybe even up to a half, once or even twice a week for your betta in a small tank, it'll keep him nice and healthy. I find bettas to be one of the most fascinating fish that we keep. There's so much to know and so many different types to enjoy. They're just non-stop fun. I hope you enjoyed taking a little time to learn about bettas with us today. And come back again next week. We'll have another story for you. Some more fish, facts, and also a great song. Happy fishing!